How do you feel about joining the MCU? I feel a mixture of like very nervous and very excited to enter the MCU. Um, yeah, I, I think people are going to really like She-Hulk and she's very different uh, for the MCU. So that that feels very fun to get to bring a character in who has such different energy. Marvel Studios is known for playing around with different genres. What genre is She-Hulk and what can audiences expect from the series? She-Hulk is a... Uh, is a lot of things. Um, it m mostly it's a it's a half hour sitcom, but uh, so it's v very comedic. But it also digs into all kinds of different genres. It sort of doesn't stay in one place for too long. Um, and we definitely get a sense of, you know, there's the action, there's the sort of Marvel big plot um, set pieces kind of element to it. Um, but then it's also like weirdly goes into like kitchen sink drama sometimes, which is very fun. Jennifer Walters is a lawyer, um, and her her career is kind of her whole identity. It's sort of, I think, why She-Hulk is called She-Hulk Attorney at Law is because Jen wanted that there. <laughs> Jen's like, I'm an attorney first. Um, and yeah, it's incredibly important to her. She loves her job. She loves what she's able to do with her job, what she, how she's able to help people. Um, and uh, And it's definitely the way that she has planned her life out. Jennifer Walters become She-Hulk, and how does she feel initially about having superhuman powers? So Jennifer becomes She-Hulk when um, her and her cousin Bruce, who is the Hulk, get in a car accident, and she's trying to help him out and gets blood, his blood inside of her body. Um, and obviously his blood is hulked up, and so she becomes She-Hulk. Um, she wants nothing to do with this idea. She wants nothing to do with being a Hulk. Bruce is like trying to like bring her into the world and train her and she's truly the most resistant to it. Um, yeah, it couldn't be further from the plan that she had for her life. Speaking of her cousin Bruce, Dan, mm -hmm. describe the relationship between Jen Walters and Bruce. Uh, Jen Walters and Bruce are cousins, but they are closer to like a brother-sister kind of like constantly taking the piss out of each other, but also love each other very much, uh, kind of vibe. And Bruce sort of, you know, has has been in this Hulk world longer than she has and has a lot of ideas about it and has gone about it in this very like clinical sort of like psychological way. And Jen uh, shows up as she Hulk and is much easier with it. She's able to deal with it, no problem. And that causes him to be very annoyed with her. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a fun dynamic. How about working with Mark Ruffalo? Mark Ruffalo is amazing. He's uh, an actor who I've always looked up to, always admired. Um, and uh, he was like the most welcoming in terms of on set. He just, you know, he's always up to play. He always wants to uh, be in the moment and find new things. And we improvised a lot and we... Uh, found like weird, you know, little little um, digressions off of the script that that ended up in this in in the final product, and that's just a testament to how open he is and how playful he is. And yeah, he was just great to work with. Talk about Jen's best friend Nikki. What their relationship is like, and how Nikki wants to help Jen with her personal life. And what does this personal life involve? <laughs> Nikki is uh, played by Ginger Gonzaga, who has the fastest brain of anybody I've ever met in my entire life. She's the most amazing improviser, and she brings this incredible, joyful, like, recklessness to Nikki that is very opposite of Jen. Um, the, there's, a, there's a lot of question around how these two could be best friends, but they do make so much sense together because I think they really balance each other out. Um, and she's also um, Jen's paralegal. So they work together and they play together. They, you know, they're, they're always together. They're very much like sisters. And um, Nikki's always trying to draw Jen out of her shell and, and pull her into the world and, and make her take risks and put herself out there, whether that's in her dating life or whatever it is, or owning this power of She-Hulk. Um, she really tries to encourage Jen to live fully and, um, 
And that manifests in her grabbing her phone and swiping on about 500 guys on Matcher and causing a lot of chaos. Speaking of Ginger Gonzaga, can you tell us a little bit about looking like her? Yeah, Ginger is like just the fastest brain in the biz. She is so funny. And um, I'd been a fan of her before we, um, you know, got to work together. Uh, I remember doing the the audition with her and <laughs> it was so fun. And she so like dommed me in this great way that only Nikki could dom, you know, Jennifer. Like she really like, she just, just ran circles around me. And by the end of the audition, I was blushing because it was so like, because she was just so th stunning as an actor and just so fun. And I just felt so like alive, but, uh, you know, playing with her. Um, and she was like on the Zoom, she was like, are you wearing blush? And I was like, yeah, oh, I put on some blush or whatever. But really, it was just that I had gone hot. <laughs> I'd gone uh, heated with with the ginger of it all. <laughs> So Jen gets offered this job to lead a division at GLKNH, which is like this hugely prestigious law firm. And the division she's asked to lead is the superhuman law division. So basically she's, you know, kind of brought in only for the reason that she is a superhero who happens to be a lawyer. Um, this doesn't sit well with her because she's already trying to pretend she isn't a superhero or a superhuman um, and feels like very kind of used for that part of herself. Um, but ultimately, she wants to have a job, um, and she she has been fired, and so she needs she needs to take this job. Uh, the other curveball that happens is that the first case she has to take on is the defense of Emil Blonsky, who is the abomination who tried to kill her cousin Briss. Well, I think you hinted this a little bit, but we're going to put it in here because. Mm -hmm. What personal connection to Jen does he have? So Emil Blonsky is um, the abomination who uh, who was injected with super soldier serum and became like a Hulk, but but really bad, <laughs> really destructive, not a good dude. Um, and he's gone away to like a maximum security prison uh, and has been kept there. But now he's up for parole. He's up for you know he's 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 up for release and um, has asked for Jen to represent him. And Jen has a massive conflict there of interest because he obviously tried to kill her cousin, the Hulk. 